Maintaining a delicate balance between a healthy environment while ensuring economic growth is one of the tasks the government undertakes daily. In this Wednesday edition of Jamaica Magazine, we look at how communities are made disaster resilient and later, how the Petrocariba Development Fund is making Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for Jamaica Magazine. I'll be back with the news after these messages. The Petro Caribe Development Fund has been helping to transform the Jamaican landscape for over nine years, expanding our roadways, modernizing our airports, facilitating the creation of jobs and providing academic scholarships, reshaping communities and improving sanitation facilities. The Petro Caribe Development Fund, moving beyond energy security. To find out more about the fund, call 960-9110 or visit their website, petrocaribejm.org. This is your JIS News for Wednesday, August 19. Residents in communities off Barbican Road will be getting a new upgraded bridge before the end of this calendar year. The Transport and Works Ministry signed a $12.25 million contract with Alcar Construction and Haulage Company yesterday to build the new Asmart Box Culvert. The existing bridge will be demolished and replaced by the reinforced concrete box culvert, which will be built to accommodate two lanes of traffic and sidewalks for pedestrians. It is designed to effectively channel storm flows and will have a lifespan of at least 75 years. The work begins this month and should be completed within four months. At the signing, Transport and Work State Minister Richard Azan apologized to motorists for the traffic delay they are likely to face during the construction. Because you are doing the construction at the same spot. So therefore, when you demolish the, you have traffic on another place. So therefore, we have to make sure that we work along both the motorists, the police, and everyone have to work together to make sure that we finish this project on time. The Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF, is investing millions to develop the community tourism projects in seven communities across the island. The agency signed three contracts yesterday to help the communities better market their offerings. One contract was for consultancy work to provide marketing and promotional services for the rural community tourism enterprises. Another will facilitate website design and build services for the National Community Tourism Portal. A financing agreement was also signed with the Jamaica Conservation Development Trust, JCDT, to continue work in the Blue and John Crow Mountains National Park. Our vision really is to really be able to target and reach um, these underserved communities that need the opportunities, and, and this is the way that, that we can do it. JSIF's intervention is also expected to support implementation of the Community Tourism Policy, which was recently tabled in Parliament. And this is different from the usual sea, sand and sun, other activities that we can take to the marketplace. Something that will be top of mind and make us different from our competitors. Government has provided over 95,000 US dollars for the continued phasing out of hydrochlorofluorocarbon HCFC, a key ozone depleting substance used in the foam manufacturing industry. Climate Change Minister Robert Pickersgill handed over the final installment check of 545,750 Jamaican dollars last Wednesday to Seal Spread Solutions Limited, the only company in Jamaica that uses HCFCs in their production. It supports Jamaica's HCFC phase-out management plan implementation project, which is being managed by the National Environment and Planning Agency in partnership with the United Nations Development Programme. This is indeed a significant environmental achievement, not only for the company, but for all Jamaica. The company has phased out the use of 33 metric tons of HCFCs in Jamaica and has contributed overall towards achieving the Montreal Protocol's January 2013 and January 2015 HCFC reduction targets. Instead of HCFCs, the climate and ozone-friendly alternative methyl formate is now being used. 
Government, in collaboration with the Organization of American States and the Canadian High Commission, recently conducted a five-day business capacity building workshop. The Train the Trainer program targeted intermediate organizations that support small and medium enterprises. They were given the tools to develop innovative corporate social responsibility CSR initiatives. At the start of the workshop, Industry Minister Anton Hilton said the competitive nature of the global landscape made it critical for businesses to understand their role in economic and social development. CSR is also about brand imaging, reputation and public trust. However, since the results are not always tangible or immediately measurable, the significance of CSR tends not to be fully appreciated, particularly among SME, SMEs. The members of the intermediary organizations who were trained will now train small and medium-sized enterprises on the principles of corporate social responsibility. And finally, Culture Minister Lisa Hanna and other members of her ministry have expressed regret at the passing of Colonel of the Charlestown Maroons, Frank Lumsden. The minister and her team have also extended condolences to Colonel Lumsden's family and the people of Charlestown. Minister Hanna says Lumsden, who served as Colonel of the community for well over a decade, was a man of vision who believed in representing his ancestors and caring for his people to the fullest. She praised his leadership for bringing wide exposure to the significant Windward Maroon heritage and most recently contributing to getting the Blue and John Crow Mountains inscribed as Jamaica's first World Heritage Site. And that's it for GIS News Today. Jamaica Magazine continues after another quick break. Hurricanes can strike at any time. In the event of one, be prepared to act quickly. If a hurricane watch or warning has been issued, review your home disaster response plan. Map out likely routes to evacuate if your home is at risk and confirm with relatives or friends you plan to stay with. Also, confirm the location of the nearest shelter. Check your emergency supplies and restock if necessary. Remember, disasters do happen, so be prepared. Watersheds are vital to our survival. The aim of this administration is to increase access to portable water for our citizens to 85% by the year 2020, with the achievement of universal access by the year 2030. Watersheds help with that. They support our habitat, our livelihoods, and provide well-needed recreation. That's why they must be protected from degradation and abuse. Back in April, the government launched a 3.9 million US dollar project to improve water resource management. The targeted area, the Yalis and Hope River watersheds, is among the most severely degraded water resources on the island. As we move towards mitigating and adapting to climate change, my ministry welcomes this project which will safeguard access to portable water, which is a key driver of the government's overall economic agenda and is a critical element in the fight against poverty, hunger, and disease. The adjoining watersheds provide the over 660,000 residents of the Kingston metropolitan region with 42% of their potable water. The areas cover 44,486 hectares of the Blue and John Crow mountain range, providing 7% of the island's farmlands with water. In recent years, the watersheds have come under threat from poor farming practices, bushfires, illegal mining and quarrying, squatting and deforestation. But through a five-year project funded by a grant from the Inter-American Development Bank's Global Environment Facility, the government is expected to reverse the problem. This Yala's Hope watershed project is geared towards achieving a greater level of water security, improving the efficiency with which water is collected and stored for present and future use throughout the Kingston metropolitan 
Dara. The whole idea is to protect and conserve biodiversity and environmental sustainability in watersheds. This will be achieved through institutional strengthening and capacity building for integrating biodiversity into watershed management. This will be supported by the watershed policy for the country and a GIS-based decision support system, which will provide real-time information to support water resource-related decision making. Creating economic and financial incentives to support biodiversity and integrated water resource management. Implementing sustainable livelihoods, agriculture and forestry in watershed communities. In order to get real results, um, people living in the watershed communities have to own this project and have to care about what it is that the project wants to do. Through these activities, more than 200 community persons will be trained in various thematic areas such as land husbandry, best practices, fire management, ecotourism, and other small business ventures. The National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, is managing the Yalis Hope Watershed Project, which has other components. The reforestation of 400 hectares of degraded land development of six on-farm demonstration plots and commissioning of market studies for development of alternative livelihoods in four communities within the Yalas and Hope watershed management areas. The project also involves the Forestry Department, the National Water Commission, RADA and the Water Resources Authority which will play strategic roles in its execution. Workshops are currently ongoing. Consolidation. The centerpiece of the program has been the need to reduce our debt. Business reform. Make sure that we transform Jamaica to make it a place to do business easily. New and existing businesses will benefit from streamlined regulations and processes. And pursuing strategic investments while protecting the most vulnerable. The path we're on is the right path. The economy in Jamaica is turning. The fact that the international community is once again lending to Jamaica says something about their confidence in our policies. It is now time to actually stay the course, not to lose the benefits of the hard decisions that have been made. The Jamaican government is committed to continuing the process of reform. The government of Jamaica is on a mission, going for growth staying the course and transforming the economy through its economic reform program. Public sector workers remain committed to Jamaica's economic reform program. In this next feature, we review the details of the 2015-2017 Heads of Agreement between the government and some public sector unions. Jamaica's economic reform program, geared towards reducing debt, improving systems and processes, and ultimately growing the economy. Part of that involves keeping the public sector wage bill at an affordable level. To make that happen, public sector workers accepted a wage freeze for the past five years. We do not expect public sector workers to forego wage increases in the coming contract period. And so in August 2015, government inked an agreement with some of the unions represented by the Jamaica Confederation of Trade Unions, JCTU, to offer improved benefits to public sector workers.
After months of wage negotiations, the government of Jamaica and some of the unions represented by the JCTU were able to reach an agreement, one that represented a compromise between stakeholders. It signifies the continued commitment of the public sector unions to the economic reform program. The agreement is for two years, commencing April 2015 to March 2017. The president of the Jamaica Civil Service Association outlines the details of the agreement. He says in year one, workers who get allowances will receive $48,000 more on their salaries each year. And those who do not receive any form of allowances will get $68,000 more per year. For year two, however, a 3% increase will apply to everyone straight across the board. There will also be an increase in allowances such as tailoring, meal, taxi and refreshment. The death benefit and funeral grant will also move up. And all three categories of travelling allowances will increase. This administration will never sign to anything that we cannot honor. That's what a very important point to our workers. Whatever we offer you is what we know we will pay and we can pay. There may be some lag in some areas because some of the items require budgetary adjustment and some departments might be very slow in tabulating the figures to submit to the Ministry of Finance. But at least the wages component will be effective for the next pay cycle, which is in September. A timeline for retroactive payments is being worked out. The heads of agreement between the government and some of the unions which form the JCTU has benefits other than the increase in wages. There will be a fund totaling $45 million for tertiary education grants to children of public sector workers over the two, year of, two years of the contract. There's also agreement for the development of at least one land or housing project for this financial year. Twelve items from the previous contract period are still being pursued. Some of these items include the implementation of the Occupational Safety and Health Act by December of this year and the payment of increments to temporary workers. We are pushing for pension reform. Uh, we have asked that employment in the public sector be more secured, meaning that persons who are now being employed on contract, um, that those types of employment be eliminated from the public service. Stakeholders also agreed to a program of voluntary separation or early retirement in keeping with the public sector transformation program. They go and the positions become vacant and they move people around and then we achieve the same objective by doing that uh, without disrupting people's um, lives. Public sector workers will also be receiving discounts on goods and services. A program is also being developed so that workers can redeem high interest loans for loans at 3% through the Accountant General's Department. For one worker that I know of, this is going to reduce that person's indebtedness from about $80,000 um, each month to about $20,000 per month in terms of their payment. That is a $60,000 take-home increase that they are going to be having. based on the economic advice that we got and the, the investigations of our own membership and leadership, we felt that this was the best that could have been afforded within, in, in the particular circumstances. We commit on behalf of the government of Jamaica to personally ensure that every single aspect of this agreement is implemented as we have agreed. The agreement, if I say so myself, will end up costing the budget more than we had assigned in the budget. On our part, we will have to look at what aspects of the budget will have to be postponed, if not completely abandoned. This signing ceremony is a culmination of a process of dialogue, mutual respect, consultation, and understanding. 
I thank our public sector workers who continue to make great sacrifices in support of the economic program for strengthening the Jamaican economy and society. A healthy and educated people living in a clean, natural environment, reducing crime, improving the justice system and governance, building a prosperous economy. It's not just a vision, it's reality. Learn about the plan. Join the vision. My country, Jamaica, has a rich heritage and is very unique. If we all pull together, we can make it the place of choice to live, work, raise family, and to do business. For more information on Vision 2030, call the Planning Institute of Jamaica or visit vision2030.gov.jm, your parish library, school library, or the Jamaica Information Service. Productivity has been a mission of the government for a number of years. Do you remember this song? What Jamaica needs now is greater production. Not just by some, but by everyone. Yes, we must work hard to keep our country alive. And export more. In order to survive, what Jamaica needs now is greater conservation, not just by some, but by the entire nation. If we use less gasoline and electricity, we'll save more in exchange to benefit our country. What Jamaica Makes sense, right? Let's continue to work towards building a better Jamaica. The Petra Caribe Development Fund PDF is celebrating nine years of contributing to Jamaica's development. Part of the fund's commitment is ensuring that we have adequate means to support our energy needs, thus its investment in alternative energy sources. Next, we we'll review the additional areas where the PDF is guaranteeing that Jamaica's development remains on track. <music> The Petro Caribe Development Fund, PDF, is playing a major role in the country's progress, contributing to economic reform, pursuing strategic investments in infrastructure, and developing policies to protect the most socially vulnerable. The organization continues to fund many significant projects, such as the expansion of Jamaica's road network, financing for small and medium-sized enterprises through the Development Bank of Jamaica and Export-Import Bank, modernization of the Norman Manley International Airport, upgrading of port infrastructure, promoting energy security, and providing youth employment. A major social intervention initiative funded by the PDF is the Community and Schools Sanitation Program. This was realized by the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding on August 2, 2011, between the PDF and the Jamaica Social Investment Fund, JSIF, for an initial grant of $200 million, which was further boosted with an additional $160 million for phases two and three of the project. This ongoing project is aimed at improving the socio-economic conditions of urban and rural communities by facilitating the construction of new sanitary blocks and sewage systems equipped with modern facilities. And I want to say, um much appreciated of this kind of venture because years gone by as you can know that this community is a community that is lack of facilities to use be it, as we would we, we say bathroom facilities 
sanitary convenience is a big and major issue for our community. Yes, I mean, I say, so I wouldn't mind if this initiative could go out right across the island. The PDF, as part of Jamaica's 50th anniversary celebrations in 2012, launched a scholarship program to support the education of awardees at the secondary and tertiary levels. The scholarships, based on academic merit and financial need, are supported by a grant of $209 million from the Petro Caribe Development Fund. Tatiana Palmer and Jermaine Spencer, outstanding GSAT scholars, PATH beneficiaries and high achievers, are among the many who have benefited from PDF scholarships. I don't have to worry that much about my school fee being paid. Uh, when I have projects, I, I know that I can get the money to buy the different materials that I will need to do it and I have bus fare and lunch money. Thank you for choosing me as one of your re re recipients for the Petro Caribe Scholarship. And I, will, I, and I will assure you that this was not a false investment. I will, I will keep on, I will keep on work, working hard to, to retain, retain the scholarship and thank you. The scholarship has had a profound impact on Sherida Mitchell's life. I remember discussing certain options with my mother and saying, Oh, you know, I'll get a part-time job and I'll tutor students in the night and anything else that might come up. When all these imaginary jobs didn't materialize, I was left with the thought that I'm going to have to walk out. When I was finally selected, I remember feeling overwhelming joy. I felt as if a load had been taken off my shoulders. I felt incredibly blessed. The Petro Caribe Development Fund Jamaica 50 Scholarship is developing outstanding scholars and exemplary leaders who will contribute to Jamaica's future sustainable development. In 2013, students from fifth form up to third year tertiary level gained hands-on first job experience and exposure to various career industries. The fund provided them with the opportunity to work between four and six weeks during the summer months. After getting that call that I was going to be able to work for the summer, and not just work, but work in an area that I could actually learn, I was really appreciative of that. This experience has been life-changing. It has given me personally a hands-on feeling of the work world. The Petro Caribe Development Fund is committed to building communities and transforming lives, contributing to the development and growth of Jamaica for many years to come. For more information on the work of the organization, call 960-9110 or visit petrocaribejm.org. Continue to keep the communications lines open through our Facebook and Twitter pages. This and other programs can be viewed at jis.gov.jm or on our YouTube channel. The JIS News app for your smartphone provides information on the go. I am Andrea Chisholm. Join us again tomorrow, same time, same place, as we provide updates on what's happening in and around Jamaica. has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.